I recently sat down with Wayne Nelson of Little River Band. They are hitting the road this spring, and it truly is all about being in the right place at the right time. So let's talk to Wayne from Little River Band. It is great to have Wayne Nelson from Little River Band with me today. Sold more than 30 million albums and formed in 1975. Lots of mixing around, but he's been with the band since, I want to say, 80, 1980? 1980, yep. 1980. Hey, Wayne, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Just moved to Nashville from Scottsdale, Arizona. How was that? A marathon. Uh, we... We closed on our house and weren't able to move into this one for another six weeks. So we ended up, uh, we actually lived in a motor home for six weeks, uh, got all the move done, drove across country. And uh, uh, so that was an adventure in itself, just me, the wife and the dog in the, uh, in the motor home. Luckily the dog's only an eight pounder. So we're, <laughs> we had room, but uh, so, and, and then now get, getting all of our stuff back and seeing it after kind of three months in storage. It's, it's been quite the, uh, quite the event, but we're getting there. We're getting there. Yeah. You're getting there. And just in time, cause little river band is heading out on tour. I know they're, they're coming to Annapolis, Maryland on Friday, June 9th. I'll be there. Get Excellent. to give you a hug in person and say hello. Absolutely. Absolutely. We'll do. Let's go um, back in time a little bit. Let's go, let's go back. Let's start back in time a little bit uh, to 78 you moved to LA right in 78 mm -hmm. right okay I had the pleasure of, of sitting down with Kenny Loggins this past Monday actually oh wow and so you had a chance to work with Kenny and and Jim Messina how did that come about I want to hear that story um uh the the first of many right place right time stories um uh I was flying by the seat of my pants when I moved to LA, a friend recommended me for a, for a band. And that band uh, folded almost immediately, but I stayed. And uh, another friend of mine did everything by the book. He went to the union, he signed up and so on and so forth. And he saw a card on the board for Jim Messina was looking for a bass player and a percussionist. He was a drummer. Uh, he called me right away because he knew I was a fan. And um, now this was Jimmy and Kenny had split, okay? Yeah. Uh, so Jim was now gonna do his first solo record. And uh, he was looking and so the guy gave me the phone number and I called the number and rightfully so, Messina was very upset. He was not happy about getting this call and he hung up on me. He said, where did you get this number? I said, a friend saw it at the Musicians Union. I'm sorry if I'm bothering you. And click, he hung up, and I went. Well, there goes, there goes my, there goes my uh, first shot at, at, a, at a at a at a good job here in L.A. And he called back like a half hour later. And he said, "I'm sorry, my name is never wasn't supposed to be up at the board, and so on and so forth." So it all had a very bad beginning to it. And uh, he called me back, and he said, "So you're." you called, you're here, I'm still looking, let's talk. And it was like, I can't believe this. And so the next day I drove up to Santa Barbara, we sat, we played one song, we went to lunch and uh, I got the job with Messina. So uh, that, the, the only real, we, we worked on the record and in 79, the record was, was released. And the only real touring we did was, we got to open for Little River Band for two, weeks solid because they were recording their live album and they wanted the same band the same routine every day uh and so there you go we were um we were on stage with them and at the end of the tour the very last night our crew came to me and said has have they talked to you and i said no other than say hi in the hallway and little river band was looking for a bass player singing bass player as well so that was uh, moment number two where right place right time because right after that tour Jim let everybody go because the record didn't perform well and again I called Little River Band they were back in Australia they said 
look, this, this, the Messina job is done. And they said, we'll call you in April. And I said, yeah, sure. And that was four or five months down the road. Sure enough, they called in April and said, this is what we're doing. Come on over and rehearse and, and away we go. So that I, I kind of encapsulated two, two years of uh, lucky phone calls, uh, to be honest. And, and yeah. you know, again, right place, right time. That's amazing. So when they said, come on over, did they fly you out to Australia and you were, yes. you were uh, uh, practicing out there? Yeah, the two weeks of rehearsals, um, another 10 days of shows at pubs in Australia. That was, the, that was the way they got ready to go, you know, do international tours was they were, they were doing local, local venues. And um, so, yeah, I got um, flown to Australia and, and dove into rehearsals with Little River Band and uh, left there, was able to go back home for a few days. But then we started in Europe for three weeks, America for three or four weeks, and then the Orient. Uh, so it was literally world tour um, to promote that live album that I had been there with with Jim's band opening for them it was mixed and they were putting out um it's called backstage pass big yellow cover uh double record and uh so we were touring the world to promote that record and then we went immediately into rehearsals for uh the next studio record which was time exposure and ended up being uh recording with George Martin at his studio in Montserrat so it was just all kind of bang, 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 all these great opportunities were coming, you know, fast and furious. Was that, was that the 81 album with the Night Owls? Yes. Or was, yeah. yeah. So you got lead on the night. I love the Night Owls. Let me just tell you. <laughs> Thank you. Fantastic song. Because when people listen to Little River Band, you know, the first thing that they think of is, you know, reminiscing, uh, Lonesome Loser, Lady. I love Happy Anniversary. I play Happy Anniversary for the anniversary of my show every year on air. Uh, which is always fun. Um, but the night owls, I, I feel like the night owls added a bit of, um, it, it was it was definitely a harder, a little bit harder than what they were used to, which was so cool because it had a little bit of that grit, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And it was, uh, it was a little darker than, uh, yeah. uh, especially with the video, which was a night setting and mm -hmm. so on and so forth and yeah you're right a grittier lyric about street life um yeah. you you want to call it that i mean it was it was there was a lot of undertone to it if you will uh yep. that wasn't in previous uh singles for sure little river man has got a lot of a lot of material in the vault that are that are uh headier if you will more topical uh issues uh, issue oriented stuff but the singles have all been songs about life and you know like you say happy anniversary and cool change and 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 loser and stuff like that they were they were all a little bit lighter approach to stuff um help us on its ways got a great message to it but night owls had that uh mood if you will that was kind of different for for the band that's a great um, word for it, mood. Yeah. It, it was a bit moodier. Yeah. I, I, and I, I don't know. There was just something about that particular song. I, I, I play it on my radio show often because I just think it, it's a really cool mix, you know, thing to add to the mix of, of, you know, yacht rock and 80s of what I play. But I think it's just, yeah, it's got that, it's got that mood and, and you really get into it. Like it hits yeah. differently. Yeah. Um, uh, all uh, intentional. Um, the song was uh, there. There was there was um, turmoil within the band that I didn't. I I was brand new, so I I didn't know about the the previous five years of history and personalities and so on and so forth. But it was that place where um, there were four songwriters and they had all had success, and they were all pitching hard that this was, we, we should go in this direction and that direction. And, you know, my songs are better and blah, blah, blah. It was one of those things. And uh, that's kind of the, the atmosphere that I stepped into. And the songwriter was looking for an alternative lead vocalist from the 
current lead singer of the band. Um, I, I was, I was, he wasn't at rehearsal. I was, I was just there and the song came in and okay, you sing this until Glenn gets here and you'll be a, a placeholder until, and I'm fine. Yeah, that's cool. Let's, let's, whatever we got to do to, to, to get ready to go on the road and, and, and rehearse the songs and whatever. It was just band rehearsal. Uh, and then it turns out the politics took over. And when George Martin was introduced to that whole scenario, um, he was forced to choose, okay, who's the better singer for the song? I don't wanna know about the politics, who delivers the song better and who delivers this one and what's better for the record and whatever. And he took the role as producer. And so he chose it, but um, all of those things were brand new for the band and kind of a, I don't want to say a new beginning, but certainly a, 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 a different road to go down for, for a few of the songs on, on that new record. And um, George chose me. And again, that was one of those opportunities coming fast and furious. That was the first time I had ever sung lead on a song in the studio ever. Um, wow. I've sung plenty in high school bands and, you know, you, you've, you're a singer, you sing, sing a song, but to be in the studio with George Martin, that was like a first. And it was just, they just, it just kept coming all the way through, you know, the end of 81 and, and, uh, and then moving forward. So it that's was, amazing. It was, See, like right place, right time. Things happen for a reason. Your, your vocals are, I think your vocals are perfect for the night owls. And, um, I'm glad that it happened that way yeah. because it could have turned so out alive. very different. <laughs> so you know? yeah. It's just, it's just wild. Um, so there's been a lot of change in little river band and, um, you know, you have stuck with them for the most part, taking a few years off here and there, uh, between 1980 and now 81. And now, um, how has, how do you think this whole, uh, and I ask a lot of people this now because I, I interview a lot of people in the yacht rock genre. How, mm -hmm. how do you think this, this new yacht rock wave has impacted your touring, your music, um, opportunities for Little River Band? Because it seems like, you know, it's kind of come back to life in a big way, in a different way, I should say, uh, with documentaries and and cover bands. Right. Um, it, it, it's interesting. It's a very interesting phenomenon because that, first of all, that band is great. The band called Yacht Rock. Um, we actually worked with them at a show in their hometown in Atlanta. Yacht, Yacht Rock Review. Yes. I Yacht just Rock interviewed Review. them yeah. last week, actually. And they're opening for Kenny on his They're opening tour. for Kenny. I mean, that's, yep. that's the progression that they've risen to that spot but they deserve every bit of it they're great yes. guys and they're great musicians um i will pass on a visual so so this was a parking lot show in atlanta and uh little river band has progressively moved to an older demographic because of course those people knew the songs when they were being played on the radio but there's always been a, a, a scattering of their kids who have grown up and now it's three generations because we got grandma, mom and dad and young adults who were all influenced by the music somewhere along the line. So there's been a, a great uh, curve for the band over the past 10, 15 years. Uh, we've tried to make sure that when they got there to the show that the, the show gave them something that they could hang on to in all three generations. First of all, the songs, but, but a presentation that was a little more energetic uh, than past bands. Uh, they're, uh, you know, we're, I'm the oldest guy in the band, but we all come from a uh, atmosphere of, of delivering, if you will, and making sure that the show gets put across to all three generations. But then to walk into the, the venue uh, where this Yacht Rock Review show was, because it was us, I think it was Peter Beckett. Um, yeah. And shoot, there was another, there was another- Robbie, uh, Robbie Dupree or John- Robbie Dupree Pauly. was on that show too. And it was yeah. um, uh, uh, th those three, 
and a, a, another, another uh, uh, last name, Walter, Egan? Walter Egan. Walter Egan. Yeah. Well, how do, how do you know this history? This is yep. great. But that no. show, but the whole parking lot was shoulder to shoulder and they were all at least in their mid twenties. There were, there were, there were none of the usual demographic and they all had fans. They had the, the wooden fans and John Oates picture was on it. So every once in a while, there was a signal that would go up and boom, everybody, there was a sea of John Oates. <laughs> watching it was amazing. The little adventure. But it, and so, the captain's hats. They wear the captain's hats. And too. the cap. You're absolutely right. Yeah. And the captain's hats. So that was the the shtick, if you will, of of the the movement. And it was early on. And then suddenly there were two different versions or three different versions because Yacht Rock Review was getting so popular. They did a West Coast version, an East Coast version, and the Midwest, um, so they could cover shows. They were they were franchising themselves. Um, they did a, a they did a, a album of original material. Um, anyway, and so their progression has been great. They're now open for Kenny Loggins, mm -hmm. and it validates and justifies the movement. What it's done for Little River Band was I, I, I can't really measure it to be honest because we don't have any numbers to. We don't do a poll as to, hey, did you come here because of Yacht Rock Review? Our demographic has stayed pretty much consistently. The majority of it is the people that grew up with the music, then their kids, then their kids, um, in varying degrees, depending on different cities and different markets. Whether Yacht Rock has influenced it, I don't know. Um, but I can tell you that to add an orchestra to the music, to have that energetic show, to have five people singing in the band, to be presenting new material all the time. It's just a healthy atmosphere for everybody. Yeah. Uh, and those people that are influenced by Yacht Rock, they wanna hear a band deliver the vocals and the layers of guitars and harmonies and keyboards and whatever. Their ears are tuned to it. And I would say that's probably the best influence that's been able to come our way is that when that music now has a Sirius XM channel. So right. there are a lot of people listening and tuning their ears back to the 70s and 80s when all those vocals and harmonies were there. So it's it's been a welcome, welcome that, if you will, for them. They come in ready to hear that and we still deliver that. There are we're all getting old, and there are bands that are. You know, Kenny's. This is his last year of touring. Yeah. Uh, I hope he changes his mind about that because I don't. I don't think. No, I don't think he's going to. Because I was pretty. Although I will tell you, Peter Frampton just made the announcement yesterday. He's doing a summer tour, and he called it quits. But he's going back out, so you exactly never right. say never, right? Yeah. Exactly. Well, exactly. And I'll tell you what. When you know, prior to COVID. My goal was if I can make it to the 50th anniversary of Little River Band, um, I'm good. Oh, don't say, don't tell me that. No, no, no. But, keep but going, keep true. going, keep it's going. Like, well, <laughs> but but there's there are two reasons. First of all, there's a there's a um, pride in the music, and there's a pride in the presentation. And uh, we used to be able to do four or five shows a week have a beer, have a cocktail, turn around and do it again the following week and whatever. Um, I, m m timing is much different now for me than that. I can't do that. Um, I literally go on the wagon for two or three days when we go out for weekends because I don't want anything to get in the way of the, the performance. Right. Um, before COVID, it was a good marker. And then COVID took away a year of touring. And I think all of us got, wow. It's easy to say the words that you want to, you're going to hang it up and then it, it, it's forced on you and you get a different uh, perspective, I guess. So that's uh, so true. It's really, there's so many people that I've spoken to that feel that exact same way. Yeah. And, and okay. So Frampton hung it up, but then I'm sure his email and 
Facebook and fan club and so on and so forth, it, it keeps building and you, you put those two things together and you go, okay, maybe I was hasty. I'll go out and do it again. Yeah. And maybe you look, everybody in Little River Band is younger than me now, substantially. That energy helps. That energy helps to, to keep uh, suiting up and going and do it. And to work with people like Kenny and Ambrosia and uh, uh, Beckett once in a while, uh, Firefall. Yes. Blood coming into all those bands because, you know, it just, it's a natural progression. So, uh, so the energy of, of all of those people helps a lot too. Yeah. Can only imagine. Yeah. And, and did you continue during COVID? Like so many people have home studios, right? Right. Yeah. And new music was being made and albums putting, I mean, so many people came out with albums right after COVID because they were stuck in their house all year. And what do you have to do? Just make music and write and put it out. Right. But I was talking to Kenny about this. And, and the important thing is, is when you are taken off the road and you stop singing um, and, and you're forced to stay in your house, you need to keep working on those vocal cords because things can change. Right. Did you continue singing and, and doing live, maybe live stuff or, or doing stuff on with your band on Zoom during COVID? We we didn't because we were in two different zip codes and the the we talked to people. We did a lot of videos and we spoke, but trying to make music mm -hmm. um, that far apart, the, the bandwidth couldn't take five people singing and playing an instrument. It was constantly um, compromised. So we didn't. We, we caught on to that right away. Our vocals would not allow us to even do that. We could record and then somebody else could record and you could make a layered recording, but you know, uh, it, it was, it certainly wasn't a live experience like what people were looking for. Um, but one of the timing things that was really good, just as COVID hit, we were about to release a live record with an orchestra. Oh, wow. And what I did was I asked the producer, send me a copy of the mix, but take my voice out. So I had a live performance of the band uh, digital, and I just set up in this, I sang to it two to three times a week. I just went in and sang the set along with the live DV, uh, uh, recording to stay in shape because you you're absolutely right. You have to. We had had everybody just stopped working or stopped singing for 10, 12 months. It would have taken a year mm -hmm. and you might not have gotten it back. You, you, use it or lose it is, is yep. basically the philosophy. And so, yes, uh, I mean, great question, but I was lucky to have that brand new high energy with an orchestra for all the songs. And so I sang to it Two, three times a week. It's amazing. Along with applause. <laughs> that was the funniest <laughs> thing because it was live. So I'm, I'm in my closet, my studio vocal closet, you know, <laughs> and I got like a thousand people applauding for me every night. It was pretty funny. Right, a couple times a week, you're like, hey. oh God, if the audience is cheering for me, <laughs> nobody is around at all. They cheered every time too, no matter how bad I was. They were, they were on it. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> I love that. I love that, Wayne. Oh my goodness. So the 50th anniversary, right? For Little River Band. Yep. And you guys are touring. Um, you're heading all over the place, aren't you? For the next several months. We are. Um, well, for, well, first of all, the, the, the 50th is in 2025. Uh, okay. Yep. Um, so still got, still got a ways to go, but the, um, the, the band is working. We'll, we'll do another 70 to 80 shows this year. Um, and then 2024 will, will roll us into 2025. I hope to be in a position where we can take that orchestra with us for the bulk of the touring for 2025. Ooh. It is such a, it's what we, what we've done is instead of a full orchestra, we've pared it down to seven first chairs. When you put 60 people up there, usually about 20 of them are really on it and then the other 40 are sometimes they're the bow isn't touching the strings you know what I mean there's yes. somebody yes. else is carrying the load up oh, I missed that section I'll catch it next time that kind of thing 
<laughs> so we found that the seven first chairs, they're such great players and they dig in with the same intensity that we're playing the show with. So there's this great communication now between them and us. Uh, and it's really become a mainstay. We, we love doing the work and we've come across a couple of orchestras that are fantastic um, and are a great addition to the show just to bump up that. Oh, fun. I can't even imagine because like when I think about, I don't know, off the head, top of my head, two, two examples, the Night Owls, the guitar solo is fantastic, right? And then you enhance that with an orchestra and Cool Change, Cool Change has one of the greatest sax solos it's a great sax solo in Cool Change. So that would be really cool to have. The third one is reminiscing has the, the flugelhorn solo at the end of it yes. too. So th that authenticity to the records helps people. When people hear the flugelhorn the first time the, the guy stands up, he, he, gets a, he gets a cheer every night because it's never been there. Right. The band doesn't have a, you know, a, a carry a trumpet player around with him. Um, and you're right, but the other, great element to that is that um, our keyboard player wrote all of the charts. Um, mm -hmm. So there's that other element that he gets a moment to come out and conduct them, uh, which adds credibility to, to us as musicians, but to Chris as a consummate, um, you know, I didn't, uh, I had no idea he had the chops to do it, but he studied it. And he, one day I had, had the, the thought, uh, it actually came from the drummer from Kansas. He said, your music would be, I gotta go. I gotta go to a orchestra sound check. And he said, hey, your music would work well with that. I'll mm -hmm. send you the name of our guy. Mm -hmm. so I went back to the bus and I said, got this new thought. Kansas guy is gonna, what? And Chris said, why would we do it from someone else? Let's do it ourselves. And I said, well, who's going to write the charge? He said, I will. Wow. And, and so, boom, it just, there it was. And, and it took a few years for the germ to, to, to grow. But um, so there, there's that element, too, that this band has progressed to the point where our keyboard player wrote all the, the parts and conducts the orchestra when he can. And that communication and that conversation between those seven and us five, it makes for a great, great show. So I, I wanna do that as a icing on the cake for the 50th anniversary tour. Um, as long as you come back to the Baltimore area, because I would like to see that. All right, I, I, prom I will promise that to you. Um, Good. I'm sure that the, pro look, the promoter that put us there this time has been working with us for years. Um, and I'm sure that that she'll want to have us there as well. So yeah, you tell her, say, we got to get back to the Baltimore area. Mer get, get, us, get us back Meredith to Maryland. Said. And then, yeah. you know, for the 50th, cause I want to, I want to see that and be a part of that. We'll let do. me, um, let me ask you a question that I always ask everybody to, to wrap up the interview. Cause it's been amazing talking to you. Um, and so insightful too. think back over your career. I'd like to know your goosey moment. And by that, I mean, when you get the goosebumps all up and down your arm and you think, wow, this is my life. This is happening. Whether it's recording with somebody or playing with somebody or something personal that's happened on, on tour. Well, it's funny you ask that because you mentioned orchestra and night owls and um, in the heat of the moment, it's great fun. Um, but we, we've done it enough that uh, I, I don't want to minimize it by saying I don't get goosebumps, but I get goosebumps thinking about it when I'm not on stage. Um, mm -hmm. You just mentioned that. And I, I immediately, I heard them playing. I, it just happened again. You, you, you can, it, it's when you get the, the memory of it uh, and it's so real and it's so vivid um, that happens. On, on, all across the board when we talk about working with orchestra and, and touring and playing live. Um, the moment when people start to add up the band's history is always a great moment. Um, the, the, the live performance has its uh, uh, it's got its it, it's got its 
um, satisfaction as musicians and singers, but it also has a satisfaction when you see people um, get emotional. And I mean, everywhere from tears to laughter, happiness, they look. Okay, I'll tell you one that happened. And it's usually the random ones. You, you know that some of them are coming. Um, there must be there must be a bay full of boats named Cool Change and people will come on those boats if they can and, and so on and so forth. Those things, those are over the course of 48 years now. You, you know some of them are coming. The other night we're playing Lady and Lady is always a trigger for women to move forward. Um, without their companions. They'll leave the guys behind. Sometimes the guys don't want to be involved. Sometimes they'll come up to be protective because it can get to be a melee and so on and so forth. But for the most part, lady was, is a trigger that we're going forward. We're, get, we're coming up there. But one night I saw there was a couple that was vividly 10 rows back enjoying doing this, just having a great time. She got up and she walked to the aisle and she turned and she sang Lady to her husband. Aww. It's usually the other way around. The guy's Aww. trying to, she, those are the kind of moments mm -hmm. that the memory of them triggers. This is what you said. This is, this is our career. This is our responsibility, but it's our joy. And it's our, well, that's why we're musicians. Um, and the flip side is, 21 something girl was at a, a Nashville, you know, uh, two, two step bar, big one called the wild horse. Great, great place. Um, she's mascara running the entire night and, and she's young and she, but she's just sobbing and, you know, Moving, moving and whatever. And I just was drawn to go, I, I hope we weren't bumming you out. She said, you've got no idea. Every trip, every highlight, every moment of my childhood with my family has been based around your music. My parents were huge fans. And so I have a, I have a goosebump moment with every song. And it was, you, you can't, you can't put a, a, a monetary amount on that. You can't, that, that's, mm -hmm. that's a, that's a golden moment. And there are, there are hundreds more of, you know, personal moments that people share about what the song meant from military to, you know, life as a child to that girl singing lady back to her husband. It was so perfect. It was just, just perfect. And- um, That's uh, the power of music. Yeah, the power of music. And I will tell you that during the whole controversy of what's been going on with Little River Band over the years, there have been some pretty dark, will we ever climb out of this hole moments um, and um, some heady moments like your recording with George Martin you know, the Beatles producer who we've just admired and respected forever. There, there, there have been those moments. But um, for me personally, the ones that, like what you said about Night Owls, that there was, a, there was something different about it. And mm -hmm. people always go, well, you weren't one of the founding members. No, I wasn't. But there was a spark that happened at that moment that involved me singing that song. And so it validates. And when people come up and say to me, I didn't even know who Little River Band was until I heard Night Owls. And then from there, I've come to respect all of the, the eras of the band, all the chapters of the band. But um, that's probably, I would have to say, uh, the, the one that hits me the hardest is Yes, you, you know we we relate because because you sang that song, and that's 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 means means a lot in the history of a band that's had such a wide um, uh, story chapter.
That's beautiful, Wayne. That's amazing. Thanks for sitting with me today. I oh, appreciate it. Great the, talking to you. The, the unbelievable magic of music. Uh, yeah. LittleRiverBand.com, Little River Band on Instagram and on Facebook. And uh, go see them because I'm going to see them and I can't wait. It's going to be my first time and hopefully not my last. She's going to get a hug. <laughs> I'm going to get a hug. Great to talk.